Before we begin this video, I'd just like to take a brief moment to pay tribute to my swatching arm. I swatched every single one of these palettes. Let me tell you, my arm was spicy afterwards. One like equals one prayer. Really appreciate the support. I was fully prepared to come into this and have you guys be like, wow, your collection is so much more curated than I thought. I thought maybe I had like 20 or 30 palettes maximum. I had almost 40 palettes a few weeks ago when I started preparing for this video. And between that time and now, I have acquired 11 palettes in PRs. I do have a few more palettes that I've repanned, depotted, and I keep those with my singles. So I'll show you those when I go through my singles collection. But these are the palettes that right now I keep together as a palette. Anything I received in PR, I will denote with an asterisk. I'll also try to link every single one of these below if they're available. Wherever possible, I'm going to include an affiliate link, meaning I will earn a small commission if you use that link to purchase a palette. Of course, you can just go on Google and search it yourself. But if you want to support the channel and you're planning to buy the palette anyway, that's a way to do it without spending any extra money. I'm actually working on a project behind the scenes that's going to have a good amount of overhead costs. So any and all affiliate earnings are really helpful for that. And I'm really excited when I'm able to show you guys that project. I won't bore you guys anymore. I'm going to put timestamps wherever possible and I will list the palettes in order of appearance in the description along with those links. Let's start with these three like one-off palettes. Most of my palettes are from the same few brands because once I find a formula I like I pretty much stick with it. So first let's do this is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette. I picked this up on 50% off sale not too long ago. I was peer pressured by my friend Cassie a makeup journey. Well actually I peer pressured her at first and she got it as a birthday gift and then she pulled it into a card on me. I haven't had too much time to play with it yet, but the times I've used it, I have really, really enjoyed the experience of using it. I love these pinky mauve mattes. These are my weakness. And then there's these shades like Moon Magic and Blissful that are just like next level stunning. I also am like really surprised by the shade Joy. I've used this a few times for different reasons. And it's not what I would expect to be like a standout for me. Very versatile, like pink sheeny shade. I've tried to depot this palette uh, without much success. If you've had any luck depotting these Huda Beauty bigger palettes, let me know. I really want to depot it and like turn it into a magnetic palette because these are the same size as the Viseart Aton Dew shades. But yeah, really enjoyed this one, especially for that like 30 something dollar price point I got it at. Okay, this is a Romand Better Than Palette in 00 Light and Glitter Garden. This is a palette full of pressed glitters, but these aren't like what you think of like the ColourPop cheap shards of glitter. These feel much higher quality and they have like some kind of adhesive in them to where you don't need to necessarily use glitter glue to get them to stick on your eye. It's like a one-stop shop for pressed glitters. Like this is the only glitter product I will ever need because it just has like so many different formulas. It has, I love these ones because they're very like, they almost feel like a pressed pigment shadow, but they are so sparkly and dimensional. And then it has like these more chunky ones, like this pink one. It just has like pretty much anything you would need in terms of a pressed glitter. And I mean, it's not something I use pretty often, but when I am looking for like specifically a pressed glitter, I know I can find whatever I'm looking for in here. So I think it's very versatile and useful to have in my collection. Next is the Cleona Deep Sea Treasures palette. I won't talk too much about this because I do have a dedicated video on this palette where I do eye swatches and really go in depth about each shade. This is a really nice palette. It's basically a bundle of exclusive multi-chromes from Cleona's stained glass collection. I hope eventually they'll release these as singles because the shade Saltwater Pearl is one of my absolute favorite eyeshadows that has ever existed. I think this is a good one to check out if you're interested in checking out Cleona's stained glass collection. You're not sure where to start. It's a great way to sample a bunch of different tones, textures, and finishes. And the shades in here are absolutely beautiful. Check out my video again if you want to see more in depth about each shade. And then I also do comparisons between these shades and other brands. Now we're going to do Natasha Denona. This is going to be the biggest portion of this video because the majority of my palette collection is Natasha Denona. Most of these were given to me as gifts by my husband and father-in-law for birthdays and Christmas and stuff because it's just like an easy thing for them to be able to find and purchase and they know I love makeup but I've also purchased some of these myself so I am planning to do a ranking video with all these palettes I won't go into much detail about each one otherwise I would just be repeating myself I'll give like a speed review of all these palettes let's start with the midi palette so let's start with the metropolis I think I'm gonna go in order of when they were released 
This is my first ever Natasha Denona palette. I've had it for a little over three years at this point. And at first I used it like crazy. It was an introduction to all the different formulas. These days I mostly use it for the like olive leaning neutral shades like Azoic and Troop. I actually have Pit Pan in the shade Troop. Like these shades, I also like these like olive leaning metallic shades. I think they're great for like a base of a look. And also these like cream to powder shades are some of the most pigmented, intense, but somehow still so easy to use like blues and greens. So if I'm looking for to really pack a punch like in my in deep in an outer corner I use these. They're like the more waxy cream to powder formula. So I get kind of overwhelmed by the amount of similar looking shades in here but I really do appreciate the unique like grungy tones that this palette offers. Okay next Sunrise. I believe this was the first midi palette that is in this 15 pan format. This is not a color story I gravitate too often but the colorful mattes in this formula are top tier like citrine carnelian jasper these are just like if i want to do a punchy saturated colorful warm tone look these are the shades i use because they're so reliable and easy to use and pigmented they're just so good i really love the mattes in here i even like love these two like neutral lighter mattes so i feel like the undertones are really unique and pair well with like warmer tone colorful looks next is the love palette this is a palette I use mostly for just a few specific shades. This color story as a whole is not one that I like super gravitate towards, but the shades Valentine and Commitment are like two shades that I am reaching for constantly. Love this like pastel pink and then this, this really deep purpley brown is so nice. The shade Dream is terrible. I don't like, this like does not pick up with a brush. I have quality issues with this shade. But the rest of the palette, I mean, I don't really have any strong feelings either way for it. I mean, it's useful if I'm wanting to create a look with this vibe, but otherwise I just really reach for a few specific shades out of here. Okay, next is the bronze palette. I feel like I almost had a fear of warm neutrals for a while. These are like filthy. I guess that just means I'm actually using them. But anyway, I feel like I had a fear of warm neutrals because of like 2016 makeup YouTube. And I kind of avoided them subconsciously for a while, but lately I've come to really Really, really appreciate this color story. I started to learn how I can make these tones kind of work for my skin tone. And I really like that these are like kind of baked clay, like reddened bronze rather than just like an orangey bronze. I mean, of course, there's shades that are that orangey bronze tone. These have the right amount of depth and neutrality that they do work. And I love the shades like gloaming and palladium and bliss. These are some of my favorites to lay down on my eye as like a structure builder and then tap on like a topper shade on top of and I think they just look so good. Like I love gloaming especially. It's got this like reddened base and this neutral brown sparkle. Just beautiful. And the shade deep dive is a really great shade for deepening for me. Okay the glam palette. Another palette I did not fully appreciate at first. Really learn to understand why this is such a valuable palette and I feel like any of these mattes paired with any of these shimmers can be paired with just like a topper shade and be a complete look for me. Like as you can see, I have a pretty good dip in most of these shades now because I've just realized how foolproof and reliable they are. I hate the way they're named. I just go by like the numbers like 333M. I love the shade here. I feel like it's a great shade to add depth without being as intimidating as like a straight up black. And I love some of these like metallic shades again to like lay down and build up a look with a topper shade on top. I think they're very useful. Really big fan of this palette lately. Definitely understand why so many people love it. Retro palette is my favorite Natasha Denona palette ever. I love this so much. I already have hit pan in the shade Andy and I have huge dips in almost all of these shades. This like mauve cool tone, kind of romantic but kind of sickly color story is like my favorite thing ever. Ro this column of mattes is like absolute perfection to me. I just love them so much. And then the shades like Jude and Helio are some of my favorites to use for layering and like structuring a look. Just perfect. I have nothing negative to say about this palette. Everything has a place and purpose. I think it's so sophisticated and curated. Highly recommend if you like this vibe, you will love this palette. The Zendo palette, on the other hand, is my least favorite Natasha Denona palette. I still do use these shades like on their own, but this as a color story, I just don't know what to do with this. And I know people who are more skilled at like combining colors do like this like contrast between the warm tones and the cool tones. But for me, I'm just like, I see this and I don't know which direction to go unless it's something very simple like just doing one or two of these shades. And this palette also has like one of the only shades 
shade they've had a quality issue with with Natasha Denona and that's the shade the Zeal. Issues with patchiness and blending like this doesn't want to blend into other shades and it's just I don't know not a fan. I do really like the shade Z uh Ten. I really like the shade Sense and I like the shade Breath in here. Those are probably my most used but the rest of it I actually like these three colors together. That's pretty but the rest of it I mean I could take or leave but I do like I will incorporate some of these shades occasionally in looks just not my favorite as a unit. The pastel palette. Perhaps the most polarizing Natasha Denona midi palette. I know a lot of people really don't like this one, but this- Oh no! This made that worse. This is my most used Natasha Denona palette. I reach for this. I end up incorporating one of these shades pretty much anytime I do a more colorful look. I just think for my skin tone, they're so endlessly useful for like either starting off a look or blending out or diffusing a look. I just really love these. I've hit pan in four of these shades and I have huge dips in a lot of these other ones. I also really like these two like satiny shimmers. I think they're really nice for layering. The more thick shimmers I could take or leave, but like this shade bubble is like my favorite for like an almost periwinkle blue and I love the shade feather it's this like pale lilac adriatic has been like a surprise favorite for me I love how thin and sheer it can be the only thing I would change is these three thick metallic shades I mean this this iridescent can go it's like very underwhelming but the rest of it is perfection so the my dream palette I feel like it is one of the more universally versatile palettes that Natasha Denona has released. It has a good range of depth, it has some different textures, and some variety in the tones. I wouldn't consider this one of my favorites. I do really enjoy some aspects of it. I've talked about how the multichrome in this palette is like very a very common type of multichrome, but it's also pretty unique in terms of the actual undertones. And then there are two shimmers in here that are like pretty dimethicone-y, but still have a lot of sparkle, and I haven't seen that in any palettes before or since this release. So kind of interesting they're not squishy but they just have the like kind of dimethicone feeling to them i'm a fan of this palette i definitely get a lot of use out of certain shades i like these like peachy neutrals and then this deep brown is really nice okay retro glam when this palette was first revealed i said it was hideous and i still do stand by that <laughs> i still do think like as a whole this is really ugly but i appreciate it as the sum of its parts i really like shades in here i just don't like all of these together and i actually feel like some of these shades are very flattering on my fair olive skin tone like these really pale neutral olive leaning shades and oscar i think are really flattering and i love the shade evergreen it's this perfect like muted cool tone greenish shade the shade oz and maxi for like layering i don't think this is a good palette on its own but i think these shades are really nice to have if that makes sense the yucca palette yucca palette i don't know i'm just gonna say yucca i've been testing for a few months i have two videos about this palette so far and i probably will come back and do like a full-on update on it it's definitely not my favorite midi palette not even in my top five to be honest with you it was nice to see something a little different from natasha denona i'm pretty ambivalent towards the color story i feel like this has been done by so many brands at this point it's nothing revolutionary like i said it was nice to see this from natasha Denona, and of course i wanted to try it out but it's not like groundbreaking by any means i also feel like the cream to powder shades in here are more tuggy than in other palettes and i've noticed that with continued use like halacia does not pick up well with a brush at all and it doesn't pick up with my finger even for a swatch these sparkly shades are nice i know people were like losing their minds over them and then people were mad that people were losing their minds over them for whatever reason they're good they're nice for a mainstream palette i think they're nice enough for me who's like a sparkle slut to use on their own and not feel like i need to bring an extra indie shadow but yeah overall i mean it's fine i'm still forming my final opinion on it but right now probably in my bottom five but there are no natasha denona palettes that i actually dislike otherwise i wouldn't have so many here's the gold palette i only have three of these larger palettes but i feel like this is a palette that people always refer to when they want to talk about things that natasha denona has done right in the past i do think it's a good variety of textures and finishes especially for a palette that was released like what is it five years ago now it's definitely not groundbreaking especially by today's standards but there are some shades in here i really like i mean i like these wet looking toppery shades sparks and kava and lime chrome is just like a classic and then this like brown shade and this shade too are really nice for layering for the way i like to use them i like the texture and finish and tones of them it's like a nice neutral adjacent palette with a twist with some exciting textures in it okay the biba palette is a really nice neutral palette i wish this was a midi but i still really enjoy it we got this like yellow forward row on the top and then we have this like baked clay almost reddish leaning row without being too orange and then this bottom row is like 
true neutrals and cool tones. If you're like really involved in the Natasha Denona universe, you know not all cream to powder shades are created equal. It's like a really waxy one. There's kind of like a grittier one. And then there's a the really smooth one that picks up really easily and spreads out so easily. This is like the best kind of cream to powder formula. Like these shades like Tor, Rayon, and Tone. So lovely to work with. I find myself reaching for this palette when I want like an interesting neutral and I do really enjoy having it. I mean, I don't think you need this if you have a good amount of neutral palettes but if you're looking for like a go-to staple like neutral palette you will probably enjoy this okay the trio chrome palette i love these like murky muted tertiary tones and i actually do like the multi-chromes in this palette i only really use them if i'm going for a very specific vibe because they're so like they're very like subdued and almost satin leaning but they're nice I have a video comparing these with my indie single shadow. Definitely check that out if you're interested. I do have a weird issue. I don't know if it's an issue. It's just an experience I have with some of the shades in this palette, particularly these two like yellow slash greens and some of these like lighter purples. They blend out to be much warmer tone when they look in the pan. Like they almost read a red cast behind. And one of you pointed out that this happens with some Sydney Gray shades and hypothesized it might be to do with oxidation. So I don't know, but I've never had that happen with anything besides these shades so i only use them if i like am prepared for that to happen i'd rather reach for something else that doesn't oxidize or whatever it's doing but overall i really enjoy the tones in this palette okay here are my five pan palettes i depotted these two and i can't find the packaging so i'm just going to show you them in this like magnetic palette let's start with the big five pan one this is the coral palette i believe i've seen people create some gorgeous looks with this but i just don't really feel too inspired by this combination of colors this one purple shade is really nice it's like a sheer sparkle almost iridescent purple but other than that I mean I occasionally reach for these as like a one-off shade but it's not something I really ever use as like a full unit okay next is a mini Biba. I like these rosy neutral tones love this one shade I forget what it's called it's like a, it's like a warmish rosy peachy neutral the metallic in this palette is not my favorite it's kind of like thick and dense just not a formula i particularly enjoy but it is really shiny and sparkly and then the mini retro palette this palette lived in my head rent free for a year and i ended up getting it as a gift either early late early late early this year or late last year and i like it i feel like the shades galaxia and industrial are the two standout especially industrial it's like it's like this greenish silvery taupe that's packed with these sparkles and then this middle shade i feel like i've heard a lot of people i've heard a lot of people say this pulls is just like a gray on them on me i don't know if this is a color theory thing but on me it looks like an olive taupe and i do like that so overall this is a solid palette did i need it probably not but i enjoy it and i do use it let's do these quads from shall we makeup these were all gifted to me from the brand i actually just did a video on these three so i won't go into too much detail about them but these are just gorgeous curated color stories had a great time testing them out. My favorite one is, my favorite is definitely this one, the Deathless Spirit palette, but I enjoyed working with all of them. I think they all have at least one extraordinary shade in them. And the mattes were surprisingly really nice to work with, but I think this is a great up and coming brand and a great price point. So I think you would, if you're interested in these types of color stories, you would probably enjoy them. And then I'll talk a little bit more about the Liana palette because I have, because I received this before I had a channel. This is a really interesting color story. I feel like it gives me Christmas vibes by looking at it, but I've seen some really talented creators create looks with this that don't give me Christmas vibes at all. The shade Silver Snake is one of my absolute favorite sparkly toppers. And then this shade in Flames is one of the most insane, shiny, and reflective red, orange, gold multichrome that I've ever seen. Like, I don't know how they got this in this palette at this price point with these other shades. It's just absolutely incredible. I think this is a really great quality palette for especially for the price. Let's do the next largest part of my collection. These are my Busy Art palettes. I have 12. Six of them I purchased myself and six I received in PR. Oh my god. I could not believe my eyes when I saw that message from them. I also have the Koyish palette en route to me so I'll be doing a video on that once I get this in. So let's start with the Petite Matte Cool. This is like this is a palette that made me fall head over heels in love with Viseart. I use this 
constantly. I've hit pan in two of the shades in here and as you can see I have a pretty good dip in almost all of these by now. I've described my eyeshadow preferences as like what the water looks like when you rinse off a watercolor paintbrush like these murky muted kind of dingy colors and this palette is like exactly that for me with the exception of these, these two more saturated pastel shades. The rest of these are like my perfect neutrals or like my preferred way of incorporating color. I just think they're just lovely to work with especially like these two tones I just feel like are really nice. Once I start fully panning shades in this palette which probably won't be too far off in the future I'll probably splurge and get the full size slim pro of this next time they have a sale because I know I will get plenty of use out of this and I don't ever want to not have this in my collection. This is a little bit of a newer one to me. This is the, neut the neutral mattes. Ever since I've had this like I totally understand why this is such a staple for makeup artists. It really has everything you need to create a matte neutral look. I really love this one shade. It's like my perfect like boring crease color for my skin tone. This is such a nice like cooler tone deepening shade for me and then it's just perfect. I find myself constantly reaching for this. It's so reliable. It's so like you know you can use this and pair it with literally anything and it will be fine. I also find myself like when I'm using a more intimidating palette this is what I pair it with because I know like if I need to do an emergency blend or you know if I'm just like not not feeling it this is what I go for. This is the Editorial Brights palette. This is my one like true rainbow palette. It's not too often that I reach for this but it's really nice to know that if I'm looking for that like intense orange or blue or purple I can find all of it in this palette and I've used like this shade and this shade. I, I did like a gradient with these. I was doing like a lemon lime type look and then I layered like a gold iridescent over it and I really loved it so definitely don't need it in anything bigger than this petite size. Okay here's the petite matte dark. This is not a palette I really use on its own. It's more so one I use as a companion palette like if I need to pop something on my outer corner or if I need to build up some depth in a look. This is a palette I usually go for. And it's just a perfect assortment of these like murky tertiary tones that I love so much. They're interesting but they're not so saturated that I'm intimidated by them. I also really like these like olivey browns and this green is nice too speaking as someone who's not like a huge green eyeshadow lover I just really enjoy all the shades in this palette. I don't really use these two orangey shades but the rest of these I've gotten a decent amount of use out of. Okay here's the Petite Koi palette. This purchase was influenced by Chloe Enchanted on Instagram and I really love this palette. It's like the soft watercolor palette of my dreams. So some of these shades I definitely use more than others. I do have a dedicated video on this palette so definitely check that out if you want to see more. I, I swatched every single shade in here but I'd say my favorite shades are this one which I think is called Pond and then and this one which I think is called Gin and I just really like these two just lay over, over my lid and then I'll like either tap a topper shade on top or sometimes these are just enough shine and sheen for what I'm looking for. Just a very elegant way to approach color even if you're intimidated by color I think you would enjoy this. And like I said I do have the Koi-ish on its way to me so I'll definitely do a video on that with comparisons. The Violette Etendu. This is like my one-stop shop purple monochromatic palette. It's like everything I need for a purple palette. We got this top row with these mauve purples which I love so much. We got a warm tone pastel, a cool tone pastel. We got some deepening shades. This like fuchsia-ish purple duochrome is one of my favorites. I love I love using this as like a structure builder and a look and I love these two pastels. Just perfect everything I could ask for in a purple palette. As you can see, I already have a pretty good dip in some of these shades and I really like the Aton Du pan size. Okay, the next palettes were gifted to me by Viseart with no obligation to pose. Like I said, I was losing my mind when they reached out to me. I was like, is this real life? I've never had a mainstream brand ask to send me anything without being like sketchy or like expecting me to do free labor in return for the product. So I was ecstatic. Let's do these quads first. These are the Flower Lotus collection I believe. We have the Rosea Lotus. By the way these are all the same size as the Aton Du palette so you can kind of mix and match if you have multiple. And this is like a rosy leaning neutralish quad. The shimmers are both on the more sparkly side so they're really nice. This doesn't really offer for enough depth for me to create like a full-on cohesive look but it's something I would reach for like if I want to create something without having to think like I know I don't really have to put any effort in for it to come out fine. There's really no way for me to mess anything up so it's good for that purpose. Still testing these out but that's my initial impression. The Sakura Lotus, similar, really similar matte to the Rosea Lotus but then it has these two like 
like purpley, almost iridescent shimmer. This is similar to the one in the uh, Violet Etendu palette, but I like the one in the Violet palette more. Overall, it's nice. Probably my least favorite of the three, but I still feel like I would be able to create looks with this. Based on my first impressions, I've only used it once or twice. And then I think this one is a standout. This is the Water Lotus. I've used this twice, not every shade. I've just used like one or two of the shades in here. And they are just fantastic quality, as we know and expect from Viseart. This deeper one in particular is really nice to work with. And the shimmers have a nice iridescence to them without, without having a super shiny. They're almost like a satiny finish, but they have that beautiful, sophisticated sheen to them. Okay, so I wasn't sure if these count as palettes but do i make the rules so i'm including these these are face and eye palettes again receive these in pr from viseart each palette has a quad of four eyeshadows and then two blushes again these are interchangeable with the quad that i just showed you and the a ton do size palettes the newest grand pro palette but not the older ones so this first one is the florette amour this is a cute little color story i like this pastel purple and this more mauvey deeper purple and then these like corresponding shimmers this is a nice like taupey, taupey blue silver duochrome. And then these blushes, I think they look really light in the pan, but, and I can only speak from my own perception. I feel like they would actually work for a wider range of skin tones than you would think because they don't seem to have like a ton of white in them. Um, I would definitely refer to swatches of someone who doesn't have the complexion of mayonnaise if you are concerned about that. Okay, Florette Bisou. This is one I definitely would have never purchased on my own. This is not a color story I like see and I'm like, ooh, I want to have that but i will say ever since i've had this i've been really enjoying it i like this unexpected combination i feel like it's kind of getting me a little bit out of my comfort zone i've only used it once on my eyes so i'm going to continue to use it before i form a full opinion but this duochrome it's like a salmony red to blue and i don't have my like multi-chrome lighting set up but i don't know if you can see it's very impressive for like a mainstream palette and then these blushes i was also impressed with normally i don't gravitate towards these colors because they just look very unnatural on me which can be a vibe but not always what I'm going for. Sometimes these tones have a lot of blue in them and that's what causes them to look weird on me, but I feel like these actually blend out to look very natural on me. I did try all the blushes on my face. Surprising win for this one. And then this is a Florette Cur. Now I took French for so many years in high school and college and I don't remember shit. But anyway, Florette Cur. This is interesting. It has very pale and desaturated colors in the eye quad. Definitely doesn't have enough depth for basically anyone of any skin tone to create a cohesive eye look. Unless Unless you just really want a pale pale wash of color i mean they're interesting tones maybe if you like pair it with another palette and these blushes are for my skin tone my favorite i feel like they're just very like don't have to think about it just slap them on they look good for me so big fan of the blushes not so much the eye quad as like a whole okay i'm doing like a palette cleanser in between each big group so let's do my sydney grace palette these are all given to me by one of my wonderful friends she passed them along to me i did a video recently on my entire sydney grace collection so i won't go too in depth on these but if you haven't tried sydney grace i really recommend their palettes especially if you can get them on sale their matte formula is very comparable to like natasha denona or other very high quality mainstream brands their shimmer shadows i don't love all of them i think some of them are too thick and metallic for my personal liking but they're more satiny shades are really really nice so okay let's do the california coast palette first oh and also i don't know if all the palettes are like this but at least these nine pans they're magnetic and you can pop out the shades and like move them around mix and match with other 26 millimeter pans i use these all the time to create my own color story so that's another added benefit and this one i believe both of these come in light and deep versions and they kind of like tweak the some of these matte shades to be better suited depending on whether your skin tone is more fair or deeper um this is a really nice rosy leaning neutral palette the shade la joya shorts is like one of my favorite deepening shades because it's not like a full-on black so it's easier for me to work with but it just like literally goes with anything and then some of these like more mid-tones are really nice. Not all the shimmers are my favorite. I do like this one, Caramel Beach. But yeah, I, did, I talk about this more in my Sydney Race video, so I'll link that below. And then <laughs> the Mountain Trail palette. This has some of my favorite, like mustardy, olivey green shades. Some of these undertones are really unique, but also wearable. Like these two mustardy shades are so nice. And then I really like the shade Trailhead. It's like a deepening shade that's like green, but not quite green. Just a really solid palette. I think if you are into this vibe, you would enjoy this. 
Here are my Pat McGrath palettes. I'm going to link these below, but I definitely do not recommend buying any of these at full price. I would say don't buy them unless you can get them at minimum 30% off. Like some of these I've gotten 40 to 50% off. So I really don't think like at the rate that they have sales, you shouldn't be paying full price. It's definitely worth waiting like every few weeks they have a sale. I think at the like 30 to 40 plus percent off price point, these are worth it for me, but everyone has their own opinion and it's very subjective. So I check out other reviews do your research before you decide if it's worth the investment okay let's start with this one this is like a clown purchase for me because i got this for like ten dollars it's the bronze bliss as celestial nirvana palette this was a holiday release i think from last year and i thought it would be nice to depot these and use them along with my singles but i tried to and they're like i don't know if you can see from where i tried to pry this out they're like not in pants they're just like in this component. So I could repan them, but I don't know if I want to. If I don't feel like I'm going to get enough use out of these, I'd rather pass it along as a full palette and not like a completely destroyed haphazard mess. You know what I mean? But these are nice metallics. I mean, for $10, it's not bad. I'm just like, do I really need this or should I pass this along to someone who will probably get more use out of it? We'll see. I haven't had this for long enough to tell. Mothership one, I got this with credit on the flip app, so I didn't pay any real money for it. I reach for it pretty often. The mats are really nice because you can really control the depth. Like it can create such a range. You can really diffuse them out or you can pack them on to add so much depth. I didn't fully appreciate her mat the matte formula at first, but now that I have more experience with different palettes and stuff, I really do. This blue shade is not something I reach for on like a day-to-day -day basis, but it's so finely milled and like silky and smooth that it's just, oh my gosh, really nice. If I'm ever like in the mood for something like this, I definitely will use this shade. And then my favorite shades in this palette are this gold shade and this like taupey blue purple multichrome. They're very finely milled, not as high impact as some of the other big shades, but they're just so beautiful on the eyes. So nice to work with, especially this one. It gives this like glossy wet look finish. It's like a blue purple to, I don't know, I don't have my multichrome lighting, but it almost goes to like a red. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see it on here. This is, for me, like the most approachable Mothership. And I like that like very cool tone curated aesthetic. Mothership 3. Mothership 3. I actually just picked this up after Mothership 11 was released because I was like kind of disappointed in the preview of Mothership 11. I kind of had the itch to pick up a Pat McGrath palette. And I was like, well, why don't I pick up the one that I've been lusting after for over a year instead of being mad that this new release is not what I wanted it to be. So I got this on like a stupid good deal. Like with everything it came in a bundle but with everything this ended up being like i think 50 or 60 percent off i've been reaching for this honestly non-stop since i picked it up i am so inspired by all these colors and i feel like there's just so much you can do with them like i'm so so happy i picked this up it is incredible i can't believe this came out like what five six years ago i was most excited for a gigabyte and this blue shade i haven't done any comparisons with my indie single shadows yet but i just feel like they're so special and they look absolutely incredible on the eyes i've worn both of these on my eyes at this point and then like this iridescent it's a shade that i have 10 times over my collection but nothing in this baked like twinkly formula that catches the light in a million ways it's not gonna really show up in this lighting setup but i am so happy i picked this up like ecstatic and i know i'm like really late to the pat mcgrath game but just makes me want to play around with layering all of these and i feel like that's the magic of the mothership palettes that we seem to have lost in these more recent releases but anyway i'm just appreciating this like relic of the past Here's Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction. As of right now, this is my favorite Mothership, but it may be quickly dethroned by number th by Mothership 3. I just think this is the best and most cohesive color story for my personal preferences. Like, every single shade in here has a place and a purpose. I love this plummy shade, and then this, like, sparkly taupey shade. It does have, like, a hard pan situation, but I've never had any issues getting it to pick up with a finger or brush, so it's not an issue for me. And then this, like, copper big shade and this sparkly gold shade... I reach for all the time. Like I'll I'll pull out this palette just to use one or the other of these shades just to add like a little extra twinkle to a look. Again, this red shade is not something I would reach for often, but these Blitz formulas are just so finely milled and silky and like the word that's coming to my mind, it's exquisite. <laughs> they just feel exquisite, honestly. Mothership 6. 
This is like, I think, one of the most polarizing motherships or the most polarizing because I've seen a lot of people say this is their absolute favorite, but I also have seen a lot of people like really not vibe with this and I think it's their worst selling one because they constantly have it on sale. Like first they had the original one at like 60% off. Then they released the Star Wars one at full price, which is literally just this palette with a sticker on it while having the original one at 60% off. Didn't pick it up. Then I saw they had the Star Wars one at like for like 56, I think I paid $56 for this. I like this combination of mattes with this like olive green shimmer. This purple blitz shade was very perplexing to me. Very interesting tone and depth. And this like topper shade is a very good wet looking sparkly topper. Overall solid palette. Not my favorite Mothership, but I appreciate it for what it is. Mothership 9. Utopian Dream. This is the first Mothership I picked up. This is a gorgeous palette. I like regular shimmers are actually really nice in this palette and I like these mattes. I use these two more than anything. I don't really like this flaky gold shade or this multichrome. Like they're very lackluster to me. I'm not impressed by them. But then these two astral shades are freaking gorgeous. I definitely have dupes of these like color wise in my indie singles and I think I do have a video comparing these with all my indie singles but none of them have this like baked twinkle that these Pat McGrath shades have and for me that's worth it to own like more than one version of the same color with different finishes because these are colors I reach for a lot but yeah really enjoy this palette not my favorite but I again appreciate this for what it is i think i'm going to do an updated series like one video for each palette where i just compare all the uh blitz astral shades with indie singles so i'll probably just go in order like one through ten for what i have last one i have is mothership 10 mine's a little busted because i depotted it but the masks did not fare well they did not make it through transit but it's fine they're still usable i was definitely a hater of this palette at first when the color story was first revealed but i've learned with pavagraph motherships that the you really don't see the full beauty of them until you see them in person for the most part. This palette as a whole, I really only reach for to create like one specific smoky, mauve kind of look, but I do reach for it occasionally for to use like just specific shades. Like these sparkly topper shades are really nice because you can really see the look underneath them. And then this like blue brown shade is one of my favorite blue brown eyeshadows. I have a whole video comparing all my blue brown shadows and this is included in there. But yeah, I mean, solid palette. Again, not my favorite. Favorite, but I think it is like it does provide a lot of value for me last two palettes we made it these are both from NC Rain Cosmetics I do have dedicated videos on both of these palettes so I won't go too much into depth but let's just start the first palette is Crystal Skies which is in collaboration with Katie Shippy Shadow on Instagram who is one of my indie makeup community friends and I think she did a great job on this I feel like these vibrant pastel cool tones this basically covers everything you would need I feel like these columns all looked very homogenous to me but when I swatched it out I could appreciate the differences so like I said check out my video if you want to see this this top row of shadows are all custom handmade singles and they're really nice I really like crystal gazer and this purple one alexandrite both really pretty sparkly special shades and I love that the the pans can be popped out so really nice palette and then this one strawberry moon i just did a video recently on this when i first saw this color story and like the packaging and everything i was like this is not my vibe at all but i was like blown away when i first tried this palette it's really like it really impressed me i think this top row is kind of unnecessary to be honest with you but like the multi-chromes in this palette they just hit different like this one radiant is this like neon like pink to orange to gold but it's almost translucent from some angles lunar glow is absolutely the standout in this palette it's like almost holographic blue pink orange gold and even this one like that which i know i said this rose unnecessary but like the multi-chrome is nice it's a very vibrant sheer like teal blue purple just a really great palette been enjoying this getting out of my comfort zone not what i would use on its own it's more like what I would pair with my Busy Art Neutral Mats or something like that to create a cohesive look in my style of makeup. But again, I was just really impressed by some of the shades in here. But yeah, that's it. How many palettes do I have? I want to pop up the number on the screen here. Let me know. Are you surprised by how many palettes I have? Do I have more or less than you expect? How many palettes do you have in your collection? What are your favorites? What are your least favorites? Let's chat about it in the comments. I love talking about makeup, but love to chat about it with you. We made it. 
Well, I'm filming this before the body of the video, so hopefully we did make it, but that's going to be it for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And other than that, I will see you in the next one. Bye!